All right, here we go. Hey guys, Dave and Barry and John. Where's John? He's underground. There's John. Hey, we're up in uh, Grafton County, New Hampshire, and we're going to see a couple of mines today. Uh, a couple we've been to and a couple we're going to uh, kind of speculation spots that we're going to go out and check out. Uh, first one, we're actually just arriving. It's uh, not far right off a snowmobile trail is the Charles Davis mine and this one was it's a, a big old cut I'm standing right at the top of it and let me show you here it's got about 30 foot walls and starts off a little bit wider comes down and then pinches to a point here that I think just ends and we're gonna go around and see if we can see that from underneath uh, and I say I think because what I've read of this mine is that uh, it's flooded and it uh, when it was active back in the 40s it was pumped so how much did they have to pump out did it shaft down uh, and then one of the descriptions says it was a 40 foot shaft or 40 feet deep now is that 40 feet from where I'm standing or 40 feet from the level of down below not sure I right, went for a slide there. Got some garbage in here. I got a cone in case you don't know to stop walking. That's the vein they were. It's right there at the end. Okay. These two walls meet and they pinch yep. together and that's where they meet. Oh, oh, so that's, oh, what looks like dirt and everything, yeah. that's the yeah. vein. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let's see if I can get a view of this pointing up here. A couple mica books and all sorts of shiny stuff. A lot of fun rocks to pick through. And then this nonsense. All right, had a quick look at Charles Davis. Got a souvenir. I'm not gonna lug this around, but I'm gonna leave it here. And if it's here on our way back, I'll bring it with me. And we're going to be off to Plume. Yeah, I don't know if I... I don't see a platform or anything. Oh yeah, those are old. Yeah. Look, look for skeletal remains at the bottom. <laughs> right, yeah, what, <laughs> what am I doing looking up? <laughs> hey, 400 feet. Are we there yet? <laughs> We're almost there, Barry. <laughs> Charles Davis is very easy to get to. Plume, not so much. Okay, just getting the plume. Seen some of the rock hounding here. Another popular spot for that. Maybe not as popular because it's a trickiness to get to, but they do find it. So, what we're looking at is a dump pile right here. I'm going to come around to the right of it. And we're going to see the, I guess I'll call it the mouth of the shaft or the cut right, so it's kind of like a pool here it's almost like if this was clean water it would be a nice swimming hole and uh, maybe a bit deep what you can see is the leaves here and it's slanting down and then it it just goes into darkness so not sure how deep that goes and then the other thing and what makes this fun in the winter is it's like this really cool hallway where it tight cuts through. We'll see that. We'll go up along the side and, and maybe even get into it. The water's just trickling. So I think if you kind of walk on the side, you can walk through that or at least part of it. Think there's any rock hounding going on here? Hey, right, we're up at the top looking down. About 15 feet down. Very tight. You walk through here when it's iced and and you put your arms out and you, you drag your hands along on each side. Good hundred feet of length. Uh, not underground, but a uh, very cool mining operation out here. Hey, right, so we're toward the back. There's still, uh, we're going to, you know, it kind of shallows out, but there is a little bit more to see down there. But I think I can give a pretty good look 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to this tree. I'm going to see if I can brace my foot and hopefully not get wet and give you guys a look. Okay. Straight through. That goes all the way through, probably 50 feet from where I am, and that drops down into that pool that we started at. And where I am, yeah, a couple feet deep. I wouldn't be happy if I fell in, but I'd be able to climb out. All right, so we've reached the end of the very long cut. Right where John is here. And this is a shallow portion. And then the road comes right through here. And then over here, we have a small quarry. That's some very dark water. I'd like to know how deep that is. I don't see really anything. I see just at the edge here, and it's sloping down at 45 degrees, and then right about where my finger is, it becomes black. Could be deep. Could be a bit deep. When you see the stuff that people leave behind, you wonder what it was they took. Yeah, I know. We're not rock hounders, but this is a fun place to just poke through and look at all the shiny stuff. So there's these two known mines out in this area. And uh, now we got a bit of a hike. And we're going to go to a, a, sec a separate area that I, we think some stuff took place. And we're going to go find out. All right, got about a quarter mile to go. And crossing a very nice stream. We're bushwhacking now. We got probably uh, 550 feet to get to the first spot. I don't think the first spot's much. Uh, but the second spot, a little bit beyond that, is uh, that's where I'm hopeful we're going to find some uh, good mining. All right, I said that first one might not be much, and not much, but it's a neat little spot. It's like the size of a small foundation you'd find out in the woods, 15 feet by 15. Uh, I don't know if I'd say it shafted down, but they dug out a little bit, and uh, you can see some sparkly stuff all around the sides. So. Uh, this is the first of a couple spots that as we go deeper or go higher up the mountain that we're going to look for. This was the smallest, but there's something here, so that's a good sign. Hey right, guys, we're coming up to something. Not quite sure what yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got something. Ooh, we got something good. Look at that, guys. Hey guys, this is not a typical entrance in the sense that, you know, sometimes you, you walk into what looks like an opening of a train tunnel. And this is not that at all. But it's looking pretty good size and it's a, a quite steep, maybe even more than 45 degree all on wet leaves uh, entrance. I'm going to work my way in. Looking at a couple of the draw marks here. And this is about two to three feet in height to get through this entrance. But I haven't been able to see if it opens up or not. Oh yeah, boy, this goes. We got some distance here. Very cool. Right, here we go. I always like to make some noise. Make sure alone. Yeah guys, it opens right up. Oh wow. What we have, so this is cool. It does it does end right here after about 40, 50 feet, but it ends in this as far as uh, how far we're going. But so check this out. We got rails that start right here and I don't know, can you tell Barry maybe how far they go? Mm, see if we get 20 some. feet. Okay. And does it, I, I'm seeing a reflection. Yeah, that's the problem that we're seeing reflection. Yeah. It looks like it ends. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but guys, oh, you can see it actually pretty good on the video. So right here is where they go underwater. And there's two big logs that the rails are perched on and just goes down. Yeah, look here, he says it might end. I, I think it does. I think I can see over here. I can trace down 
and see where it ends. Alright, so we got a 40 foot cavern. We're standing up comfortably, seven, seven feet in height. Uh, I'm going to get my measuring device after. I'll tell you guys exactly what this is. But this is a very cool uh, and, and unnamed. Uh, there is nothing on any map in this vicinity. So this here is like the fault line. This is the material they were mining, and this is like granite. That's where they meet. You can see where they're falling in. Okay. All right, guys. So what Barry is just noticing is uh, it looked like a cavern, but you, you know you got to be careful because. Uh, Barry got in the side and he looked over. This continues. It uh, added off to the right. So these rails, uh, this is, is like a, a dip down, not a lower level, but a dip down. So the rails are at the bottom of the dip down. So they would bring it, uh, seemingly bring material from the tunnel here right up to this spot. And then it was up the rails and straight shot out of the mine. A couple quick measurements. 12 feet, that's the width of this. Uh, 6.3 feet, uh, that's where I measured the ceiling. It fluctuates, it's up and down, um, maybe up to seven feet at least. And then I have, I wasn't right at the uh, entrance, I have 30 feet from where I was to the back wall, but at least another five feet to the entrance. Uh, so 35 feet of what we can get into. Uh, as far as what drifts off on that side tunnel, uh, we don't know. Back outside. I want to show you guys a couple things. One, uh, this has a massive dump pile. So we're hopeful that, you know, if, that, if that's how much uh, uh, rubble they took out of this mine and that's how much there will be to explore inside of it. What you see is where it, uh, you can see the tracks come up, uh, no longer tracks, but the cut comes through here and then the mountain slopes down, but that goes straight and is level all the way out another hundred feet. A uh, really big pile. And then the other thing is, let me come back over and I'm going to look down on top of the cut. This mine, we are uh, pretty well certain the entrance was buried at uh, upon completion and has opened itself up over time. Uh, you see the cut come up through here. And it comes up 10 feet, maybe 15 feet. So it comes up, it's all, you know, that's a new level right there. And then at the back, as you see, it just kind of drops. You can't see the entrance here. So if that was filled and level all the way, you would never know. This would just be a big open cut. And we'd say, well, you know, big, big, big uh, excavation, but nothing underground. But because it's opened itself up, we we're able to get into the... Uh, tunnel. Okay, guys, another spot. We got a uh, about the size of that. Uh, actually, a little bit bigger than that previous prospect type spot. Uh, also flooded. Also, I can see leaves, so I'm thinking, you know, the same two, three feet down. But they were uh, they were doing some digging out here. We were scouring the side of this. Uh, hill. John took below, I took medium, Barry went up top. Barry said I got it. I don't know what he's got yet, I'm catching up to him now and John's right behind me. But we got another one. We got a big 30 foot wall here. I'm walking into an open cut. A uh, little bit squishy but nothing bad. Uh, oh, I see an opening here. Oh, guys. Look at that. I can't tell yet. And he's not giving any spoilers. Alright, so this comes in here. So here's a home for something. Actually, let me get some light for you. Alright, so we got a little side shoot. 10 foot side chute here, that is uh, a condo. We got flooding here. Does it go down and under? It does not seem to. All right, so, so far we're in a, a really cool chamber. There we are looking back out at John. Let me slow down and give you some good 
video. This here is a collapse. Okay. So guys, it's like a quarry, but they bored, they dug in at the lower part at the back end of the uh, quarry into the hillside. I say quarry, I mean, it's like a wide cut. There we go, we got a uh, separate room. About a 10 foot room. And nice and dry in this one, it's a little bit elevated from where we were. So, if I get to the back, it's also another home to something. Everyone's out today, nice day, they're out running around. Alright, so I'm in this second side uh, chamber, the smaller one. It's Barry, and looking, so like Barry pointed out, there's been a collapse, there's a lot of big rocks there that are scattered, so this would have been just one big open. Oh, look, look at that, see that green coming through, that's mica, and some nice, not big books of it, but see it's pretty thick, I don't know, it might be if it goes into that rock a little bit. Let's see, it connects down there, so you see that's looking... Uh, you can just walk through to the other chamber that's looking down uh, into where it's flooded. All right, guys, I'm standing on a rock. Uh, I'm right below the wall, uh, the back of the the back of the mine, and so just to give you a nice look all around. So the walls, good 20 feet tall, 25 feet tall. And then in the back, kind of two different cavities. We got our chambers. We got the one here with that little offshoot. Uh, low flooding there, but does not go anywhere. And then up over here, uh, another room that goes in 10 feet that you can get in and stand in nicely. So what a uh, ending this on a couple of great surprises. You know, we came out here and we said, geez, the ground looks stirred up. I think we think we see dump piles. Let's go look. And uh, found something really cool at both sites. On our way back, uh, we're kind of been following the uh, snowmobile trail, but we veered off into the woods. We started seeing a few things. And we got a couple. We've seen a few foundations. We just found another one here. Uh, we got something up over there. We're gonna go check out and foundation, some old metal and the stuff that remains. Then we got a well. It's like a I don't know if somebody half-heartedly tried to cover it and it's exposed. I think I can see water in there. About 10 feet down. Yeah, so uh, we won't get any closer to that. Actually, let me come around here because I think a shadow. Yeah. There we go. These things are throughout New Hampshire, throughout our woods. And here's another one. Okay, so that'll do it for today. Boy, couldn't have worked out better. Look, the sun shining and everything. So things just ended uh, perfectly for us. Uh, found a couple new mines. We don't know anything about them. Uh, if we find anything, I'll, uh, you know, I'll include it. Otherwise, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this adventure. Another adventure up here in the woods of New Hampshire. And we'll see you on the next one.